namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse namo tasse bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasse uh, last couple of weeks actually we were discussing uh, dvaita anupasana sutta which is available in the sutta nipata which is a very interesting sutta and fairly profound sutta discussing about the aim of our practice and the aim basically does not mention here as the ultimate goal rather in order to reach the ultimate goal how ultimately we come to a kind of a conclude concluding practice there are various different kinds of practices that we may be getting involved with ultimately they can drill down to a one particular important practice and such important practices are mentioned here so there are such 16 practices explained in this sutta and uh, buddha is now explaining these to the venerable monks one after the other so at that moment actually the monks are in a very uh, sort of uh, diligent state and they all are practicing really well so buddha was inspired by their sight and basically then delivered this sutta and again you need to understand this is not a, in a way a little bit of beginner stuff rather a little bit of advance uh, where a certain yogi has went through certain amount of uh, vipassana practice and for such person how he is going close to or going towards a particular destination particular uh, concluding type of practice now not not necessary to look for everything else okay i can kind of decide on this particular practice i can continue this practice now it has drilled down to this one so something like that now under these uh, practices with the first first talk about the four noble truths so they are the four noble truths are categorized into two sides the first two truths are causing the suffering that is one contemplation and the other two causes other two uh, say noble truths are causing the cessation of suffering so those are the two contemplations uh, included in the first practice the second one is related to acquisitions what we call as the upadis we are all different kinds of acquisitions we can think of all five aggregates we are time to time we grasp and uh, think that uh, we are one of them and i am that so likewise we acquire that and there may be certain other situations like various uh, external objects like sight sound smell taste tangibles so those are also wonderful and sometimes we attach to them we consider them as mine myself so likewise that is also there and various defilements are there we recognize with them we identify with them so likewise these acquisitions are various and all that by the way causes suffering so that is that is one contemplation and if we are able to let go of all those acquisitions so that is the freedom of suffering so that is the second uh, concluding kind of practice with the summarize in this sutta then the third one is related to ignorance whatever suffering or originates that all originates because of ignorance avijja if, if one is able to abandon that avijja so then that is no suffering so concluding point is here the avijja ignorance so one needs to abandon avijja and there may be various methods available for that and one may be continuing such methods further and further to develop the wisdom so that avijja the ignorance can be dispelled and then number 4 uh, the fourth kind of concluding practice is related to volitional activities sankharas so whatever suffering arises that happens because of sankhara yang kinchi dukkham sambhuti sabbam sankhara pacha so one recognize so how these volitional activities are causing suffering maybe certain amount of agitation in one's mind so that is what uh, referred here and then the second contemplation is the calming down of all sankharas uh, cessation of all uh, sankharas and that is where the freedom happens 
సంఖారానంతేవ అసేస్ విరాగ నిరోధ నత్తి దుఃఖాస సంభవోతి సో ఇఫ్ వన్ ఈస్ ఏబుల్ టు ఫేడ్ అవే ఆల్ ద సెసేషన్స్ ఆల్ ద వొల్యూషనల్ యాక్టివ్ ఆల్ ద వొల్యూషనల్ యాక్టివిటీస్ సంఖారస్ వొల్యూషనల్ ఫార్మేషన్స్ సో దట్ లీడ్స్ టు అ పీస్ఫుల్ స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ మైండ్ అండ్ నంబర్ ఫైవ్ నంబర్ ఫైవ్ ఈస్ విత్ రెస్పెక్ట్ టు కాన్షియస్నెస్ యంగ్ కించు దుఃఖం సంభవతి సబ్బం విజ్ఞాన పచ్చ సో దట్ ఈస్ యాక్చువల్లీ వ్యాలి డీప్ హౌ కాన్షియస్నెస్ కాసెస్ సఫరింగ్ సో హియర్ ద కాన్షియస్నెస్ ఈస్ ద కన్స్ట్రక్టెడ్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ సో ప్రిపేర్డ్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ మేనిఫెస్టెడ్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ వ్యా ఇన్ పాలి ఇట్ ఈస్ కోల్ యాస్ అభి సంకత విజ్ఞాన పతిష్ఠిత విజ్ఞాన సంకత విజ్ఞాన యూ క్యాన్ సే అభి సంకత విజ్ఞాన సో ద further constructed consciousness once we see something we can't merely restrict or keep it at the seeing level but we add different things and then we multiply that we slowly establish ourselves there our mind get established there so the consciousness is established so this established consciousness causes suffering so the freedom of suffering is the cessation of this constructed consciousness established consciousness so ultimately we can say the consciousness is freed unestablished so that is with respect to consciousness buddha comes with uh, this concluding practice then the next one is based on the contact that is the passa yankichu dukkham sambhoti sabbang passa pacchaya different kinds of contacts are happening through the eyes we see through the ears we hear through the nose we can smell through the tongue we can taste through the body we can recognize or we can go through certain tangibles and through the mind we can know cognize mental objects so when we are handling this uh, six sense basis that basically if you are not mindful if you are basically unmindful it can cause us havoc inside so basically some certain kind of agitation can happen when we have uh, unguarded senses <clears throat> and as a result of that we get into further and further suffering so inner peace is lost you become completely bewildered by all these sense impingements so it causes suffering pc is not available there you start again burning but on the other hand passa satveva asesa viraga nirodha nati dukkha sa sambodhi sambhavoti so if you are able to come to a state where contact has completely faded away its function has stopped then there is no suffering so that is the good side or we can say the super, super mundane side now as you can see these discussions are very much like aligned with two sides the first contemplation is always talking about the suffering that is where the mundane side on the other hand the second contemplation is helping us to navigate towards the super mundane the lokottara side then the next one is related to feelings last time we discussed this last week so whatever suffering arises that because that happens because of feelings yankichu dukkha sambhoti sabbhang vedana pacha as a result of feelings the suffering happens on the other hand if they are if it is possible to uh, fade away the feelings if there are no such conditioned feelings are going on so then one can say one's mind is peaceful the feelings are abandoned so there are the peaceful state of mind serene state of mind can be available so with respect to feelings so how one can recognize feelings how one can ab- uh, kind of abandon that without grasping them so that we discussed last time now we can come to the next uh, concluding kind of uh, uh, practice so buddha ask now if someone is asking is there any other kind of practice that you can say which will ultimately drill down your whole effort or all your practice then buddha says now already we discussed seven kinds of such uh, 
concluding type of practices aims and Buddha say yes we can say another one so that is based on craving so this is in a way a known one fairly common to us somewhat heard about it yankichi dukkhan sambhoti sabbhang tanha pacha tanha yatveva asesa viraga nirodha nati dukkhasa sambhoti ayan tutiyanu pasana so this basically aligns with the noble truths so the second noble truth is the cause of suffering that is tanha dukkha samudayang arya satcha so that is what the tanha so this is exactly what is mentioned here yang kinja dukkha samboti sabbang tanha pacha so suffering happens because of craving so in the four noble truths also we know that buddha summarizes the whole thing that the suffering happens because of craving dukkha samudaya is the tanha craving on the other hand the supramundane side is the nirodha where are the cessation of craving so that is what exactly mentioned in this dvetan pasana sutta as well tanha yatveva asesa viraga nirodha nati dukkhasa sambhava now if we are able to completely eradicate uproot abandon that craving then there is no suffering so this in a way a common statement known to us somewhat interesting thing is that we can uh, sort of summarize our whole practice into this rather than thinking of various things allowing the mind to scatter and sort of get confused what shall i do what shall i do is it correct is it incorrect so likewise we can have certain kind of perplexity even about our practice but this is an in a way some easy point or easy concluding kind of practice where one may be observing one's mind and trying to understand what is available in the mind what kind of craving is available in the mind so buddha discuss about different kinds of craving different types of craving are there yayang tanha pono bavika nandiraga sahagata tatra tatra binandini sayyati dang kama tanha bava tanha vibhava tanha so buddha mentioned this in the dhamma chakka patana sutta so there are this craving it has certain properties and it are uh, it is of three fold or three types kama tanha bhava tanha vibhava tanha kama tanha so this is a common known thing that we all have sensual desires so till one attain arahantship so one has desires on the other hand if one is able to deplete certain amount of kama tanha one can even become a sakadaga if one can completely abandon kama tanha then we say one has attained the anagami but still other forms of tanha may be operating like desiring to uh, have a certain kind of uh, immaterial fairly sublime kind of experience feelings so then that means rupa raga arupa raga so those are still available so that is also a kind of very refined level of craving and that could be abandoned when one becomes an arahant so likewise if we consider the fetters the 10 fetters sangyojana so there also we can see uh, at the immediate level we have kama raga and next level we can have rupa raga arupa raga so rupa raga and arupa raga comes under the higher fetters what we call as the uddhambhagya sangyojana so those could be abandoned when one becomes an arahant so we can see this craving is a fairly spreaded kind of defilement it is available highly available in the mundane uh say worldly kind of activities ignorant worlding is complete constantly being bombarded by different kinds of desires cravings when one becomes a seeker a trainee his mind is somewhat uh free from craving when one becomes say a seeker arahant then only we can say okay he is completely free from craving so basically this means uh tanha is one of the companion of our mind so therefore in this uh, the etanupasana sutta buddha summarizes basically tanha dutiyo puriso 
ತಂಹಾದುತಿಯೋ ಪುರಿಸೋ ಸೊ ಬಿಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕ್ರೇವಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅವರ್ ವೈಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಅವರ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಅವರ್ ಫಿಯೋನ್ಸೆ ಈಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಸೊ ಲೈಕ್ ವೈಸ್ ವಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಬಟ್ ಬುದ್ಧ ಕನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಕ್ರೇವಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ವಾಂಡ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಫಾರ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ಎವ್ರಿ ವೇ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಗೋ ಸೊ ಕ್ರೇವಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನೆವರ್ ಅಬ್ಯಾಂಡನ್ ಅಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಟೈಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಗ್ಯಾರಂಟಿ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಓಕೆ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಬೌಂಡ್ ಟು ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಪ್ಯಾಥಟಿಕ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಸೊ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಐ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಐ ದಿಸ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹಮ್ಲಿ ಸಿಂಪ್ಲಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ದೋಸ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈ ದೋಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ ಕುಡ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ಈವನ್ ದೋ ವಿ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಆಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶೀ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಶೀ ಆಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಶೀ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಅನ್ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ಸೊ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಅ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಫೀಲ್ ಸಮ್ ಸಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನ್ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಷನ್ ಅನ್ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಮೆಂಟ್ lack of something so that's why buddha summarize uno loko aditto tanha dasu so this world is always feeling like something missing lack of something the worlding can never be fully satisfied uno loko aditto so he is in a kind of an unsatisfied state unfulfilled state he don't feel that he is completely fulfilled i don't need anything else he doesn't have such kind of a mentality basically he feels that i want something i need something more what i have is not enough i need something more or always this kind of a frustration is inside certain amount of restlessness is inside because the craving that partner is asking and never get fulfilled never be satisfied tanha so this uh, but the mention they are the that statement in that rattapala sutta uh tanha dasu one becomes a, a kind of a slave to this craving uno loko atitto tanha dasu it becomes one becomes a kind of a slave to the craving so again and again this craving gives orders and we simply try to obediently agree with that try to fulfill that and as a result of that we are tend to satisfy our senses or gratify our senses so when craving says okay i need to see a film okay i am ready to open my eyes and see a film when craving asks okay i need to listen to some beautiful music okay i am ready to pay my attention and listen to some music if craving asks okay i need some good fragrance i can spend lot of money to buy a a very expensive scent fragrance and then i am trying to satisfy craving by smelling that craving sometimes asks okay i need some delicious food maybe ice cream maybe a chocolate so i am ready to spend some money and forgetting about my illnesses i am ready to satisfy those taste buds basically the taste is another way of another side that we can fulfill the craving trying to fulfill the craving it will ask it again by the way never be completely fulfilled but it will ask it again next uh, maybe it will ask okay i need certain good contact a soft contact maybe a luxurious contact maybe a very pleasant contact so it will ask whatever tangibles and then we are trying to full provide that maybe a person who is given that contact we may be associating with or if something some material stuff that it is providing that contact okay we are trying to buy that try to possess that try to keep it with us so likewise we are trying to satisfy those uh, desires so that we get certain amount of bodily comfort bodily satisfaction through the contact then mind also says okay i am feeling bored let me think about what has happened yesterday how i spend my time really fantastically in some years ago 
oh what went wrong last time so i better worry about that is there any something to be worried is it something to be afraid so we are seeking something to be afraid and we start thinking about it and even in the future this is going to happen this is going to happen there's a world destruction there's a great war there's a tsunami so we are sort of worrying about it we are kind of having certain perplexity about it and we want to think about it so mind satisfied itself by constantly involving it that kind of thinking so we are addicted to our thinking so tanha is one aspect leading us towards thinking tanha papancha different kinds of papancha are there the proliferations are there so tanha is such kind of a division or a stream which takes us into proliferation to kind of uh, overthinking again and again we are overthinking because tanha the craving is tempting us craving is guiding us craving is promoting us to think we don't know how to keep the mind in a kind of a relaxed silent manner but tanha promotes thinking so we are constantly thinking so tanha being fulfilled or tanha being satisfied even by merely thinking so you can see i mean we are in a way kind of a trapped situation through the typical five senses we are going through pleasure principle we are trying to satisfy gratify those senses on the other hand through the mind we are tend to overthink we are addicted to thinking so this is how we lives tanha dutiyo puriso diga maddhana sansara so by keeping tanha the craving as a partner so one is wandering on this long journey itta bhava anyata bhava sansaram nati vartati so basically buddha therefore mention he jump from this object to or that object he likes to spend some time in the eye gratify eye maybe then the ear then the tongue tongue then the nose then the body again the eye so likewise from this point to the other point from that sense to other sense so we are jumping and trying to satisfy on the other hand from the long run we can say we are trying to dwell in the hell man in the same human realm and we are trying to satisfy and if it is not enough we are trying to go to the heavenly realm and then we are going to satisfy again probably we may be coming back to the human realm again trying to satisfy so going from one existence to another existence so kind of becoming is there again and again a becoming is going on so this becoming is another aspect of tanha so now we fairly discuss about the karma tanha on the other hand the becoming so we are tempted to think future kind of uh, think the next moment our next event so that is why so we, we basically become uh somewhat uh, unsatisfied in the present moment because craving gives us certain kind of frustration internal frustration asking something more and uh, inclining towards the future so therefore tanha is called as bhavanetti we are our minds are inclined towards some future event right now i am not that satisfied but in the future i am going to be satisfied right now i am unmarried so let me marry her so that i can become satisfied right now i am in a particular job it is not good enough let me try for a promotion so then i will be satisfied right now i am in a particular house which is not good enough let me buy a new house so that i am going to be satisfied so i am currently not happy so let me have some ice cream so then i will be satisfied i am currently in one country which is not good doing well let me migrate to another country so that i will be satisfied so likewise you are constantly being driven by those ambitions kind of different futuristic events even though currently the body stays here i have a mind inclined towards a future event inclined towards a future 
kind of a being, kind of a state. So this uh, kind of uh, tendency available in our mind is fairly influenced by this bhava tantra. So that is the ultimately why we become unsatisfied in this life. So we want to have another life. So we are going on and on in this sansara, expecting satisfaction, expecting fulfillment from life to life, from birth to birth. So this is the what we call as the becoming process available in us, the Baba Tantha. On the other hand, the opposite also operating, so that is called Vibhava Tantha, where one is trying to reject the present experience. I want to get rid of it. So it is uh, useless. I want to get rid of it. So I am sort of resisting the present experience. I am trying to ex- reject some kind of a thing going to happen and I am tra- hating that. I don't want it. I don't want to meet him. I reject it. I hate it. So likewise in many different ways so we are not being able to accept or be patient with the experience so rather we have inner rejection attitude of getting rid of something so then people even commit suicide because they are in a kind of a denial self denial kind of a process now that sort of attitude in the mind is promoted by this vibhava tanha where one wants to reject something, one wants to end something forcefully, one doesn't want to be with something. So that Vibhava Thanna is also another aspect of craving. So we can see these three types of cravings are fairly operating together. Now say if you are not satisfied in the present moment, if you feel that uh, you feel bored, I want to get rid of it, okay Vibhava Thanna is there. Now you are now in the way thinking of having a coffee that promoted by the say becoming process okay having a coffee would be a wonderful experience let me have a coffee I am now imagining about a good coffee a cappuccino whatever it is a very good coffee okay I am imagining now I am thinking about it now my mind inclined towards it now that is actually the form of bhavatana. Now you approach that, you may be buying that and ultimately you are enjoying that. Now in a way you are enjoying the coffee, so that means uh, prasatanha, where uh, taste related tanha craving is there. So that ultimately comes to the karma tanha. So these three categories of tanha are fairly interrelated and uh, ultimately craving is the one winning. Now different uh, areas are there for us to uh, understand this process and on the other hand uh, uh, Buddha further summarizes Yathapi mule anupaddave dalhi chinno pi rukho punareva ruhati evam pi tanhanusaye anuhate nibbattati dukkhaṁ idaṁ punappuna So this is a Dhammapada verse in the Tanhavagga so even if you are cutting a tree from the middle, if the roots remain untroubled without uprooting them, roots are there, then it will grow again. Similarly, Buddha mentioned, if one's uh, roots of craving still available, the tendencies the, of craving are still available, even though you simply do a little bit of meditation and trying to sort of abandoned craving, still it will grow again and again. It will appear again. Because the Tanha Anusaya, the Raga Anusaya, is still available. So one has to uproot that. One has to completely take that out. That's a, that's a difficult task in a way. So what we see is only the manifested kind of desire. But unfortunately the hidden desires those tendencies in our mind, latently available, are not known to us. But until we are able to, until they are sort of uprooted, again and again, they will come to the surface and give us various orders, give us various demands, various requests. So therefore, this process is not an easy task to abandon craving. 
So in the Satipatthana practice, therefore, craving is uh, considered and we have to look for that. And basically, in the, in the Chittanupasana level, probably you can recognize when craving related thought is available in one's mind. Say for example, uh, one was able to keep a little peaceful mind, but all of a sudden say, you got a thought, I want to have a chocolate. Okay, fine. Now that is not because that you are hungry, but rather it's a kind of a desire, which is arisen in one's mind. So there's a desire, I want that. Now, in Chitta Vipassana, if we are able to recognize that. So, typically what happens is we don't recognize that. Rather, we immediately try to fulfill that. So, you are going quickly to the grocery, you are going to the supermarket, or you are simply opening your fridge and try to get the chocolate bar and try to eat that. Immediately, we are doing that. Complete, quick gratification. But rather than doing so, so once this desire arises in one's mind, so how about step back and watching it? Oh, there's a desire in this mind. So there's a kind of a turning point in one's mind because so far we were not looking at them like that. Rather we thought, okay, I want to have a chocolate. So you are immediately acting upon it. You are immediately obeying that order. So rather than doing that, how about step back and watching it? There is a desire risen in one's mind. Saragan chittang, saragan chittanti pajanati. Suppose that you want to see a film. There's a new film now being shown or now available in Netflix, Netflix, this thing, that thing, or different things, maybe in YouTube. Okay, you want to see it. Now there's a desire. Now, desire is there now rather than try to immediately open your laptop and see that how about you recognize that desire oh there's a desire in the mind so when a very good internet is there 4g 5g then start there so we we tend to quickly satisfy a desire rather doing that is it possible for us to see the desire Say for example, there's a very good song and someone is singing that and you simply get a little mark about it and probably now you want to record it and maybe listen again. So this is another desire. Can we see that desire? So stepping back and noticing this desire in a way is a little tricky thing because mind doesn't want to do that. Mind just simply wants to quickly satisfy that and that gives us some kind of a delight but the function here is rather than quickly have that delight how about step back and see that desire now that is the satipatthana practice what we are talking in the chittanupasana level so whatever thought arise we step back and see that thought as a mere thought so one may not be able to immediately come to this level. So that's why we have to practice certain amount of Kayanupasana, maybe certain amount of Vedanupasana, so that one develops this capacity. When there is an experience, rather than being trapped in this, that experience, how about stepping back and watch that experience? So once that capacity is there, then slowly one can look at, look at one's mind. So when there is a desire, okay, there is a desire. When there is a, a like, there is a like. Then there is a request, a demand, then there is demand. So likewise we can recognize so what is available in the mind. And the important thing is once we recognize that step back and simply watch it, it has the nature to fade away. It is not that we are trying to push it away, we are trying to sort of uh, suppress it. Rather, these desires have the nature to go away. If they arise, if they arise, they are subjected to passing away. So that's their inherent quality. So we are the ones feeding them, we are the ones promoting them, but they are coming to go. 
they are coming to fade away they are coming to cease to leave now if we are able to minimize our participation rather we can mindfully watch it so this is a very good opportunity for us to see even this impermanence how these thoughts the craving thoughts are coming and going and uh, once we see that okay then thoughts also become not a big thing it is not something substantial it is not something that we definitely have to attend and it is not something belongs to us either thoughts are merely thoughts so we come to a certain insight where thoughts are merely thoughts they don't belong to me and i can even if you if i want i can simply ignore them i can step them step back and watch them so these kinds of insights are very important because then only one start looking at one's mind thoughts particularly objectively because one know their true nature how they come and go so as a result of that one is now able to recognize that so instead of fulfilling instead of being a slave to that now we are able to look at it now this step is uh, mentioned in the nivarana pub if we consider in dhamma upasana so there are the important thing is when it is there you know it is there when desire is there you know it is there and when there is no desire kama chand sensual desire and you know there is no sensual desire so this is another state that actually we were taking from the uh, chitta anupasana but it is available in the dhamma anupasana as well but the important thing in dhamma anupasana is that when you know that there is no desire at the next moment how a desire arises the very first thought even a very first inclination very very initiate initiative uh, demand happening in the mind that also would be able to notice यथा च अनुपन्ना कामचंद उपाधो होती तंच पजाना सो बुद्ध मेन्शन सो इफ दिन दे वॉज नो कामचंद सेंशुअल डिसाइ बट नाउ इट इज अरइसिंग दर इज कामचंद अरइसिंग नाउ सो यू आर सीन दैट द अरइसिंग पार्ट ऑफ कामचंद ओके नाउ इट इज दया इट हेज ऑलरेडी अरिसन इट इज दया यथा च उपन्ना कामचंद पहाना होती तंच पजा नाउ इट हेज गॉन now since you were able to properly handle it you didn't promote it you become you didn't become a slave to it rather you simply watched it didn't feed it now it has gone now when it is abandoned that is also you can see so it is now reducing it is going it is it has fading away okay now it has gone now once it has gone faded away a new one may not happen immediately okay for that time you feel that there is no desire no sensual desire because what has arisen it completely ceased now there is no desire pahina sa kama chanda i think anupado hoti tanch pa janati but maybe at a later time it can arise but for a certain amount of time your mind is free from that desire so probably in a future time or say in your good practice probably once it has gone it's gone for good does not come again so that's the best thing so that one you have once you are able to abandon this a particular desire completely and actually knowing that a particular desire is available in one's mind is a very very important thing so it is highlighted in the several suttas so for example in the patama sandittika sutta in the angutra nikaya chakka nipata uh, and even in the second sandittika sutta ya yeah, buddha talks about the what we call immediate immediacy of this dhamma immediacy of this dhamma sandittiko dhammo sandittiko dhammo so this dhamma gives us results immediately without delaying without taking any time you can immediately see the result so then one monk sivaka so he is asking bante what is this 
Tang, uh, what is this uh, immediacy of this Dhamma? Sandhitika Dhamma. What, is, what does it mean? And then Buddha tell him, Tangkim manyase sivaka, santangva ajjattang loba, attime ajjattang lobosti pajanati, pajanasi. Now, once you have a greed, can you know that there is greed? And he says, yes. And if there is no greed, can you know that there is no greed? Yes, I can know that. Okay, good. Yanko tang sivaka santangva ajjattang loba, nattime ajjattang lobo ti pajanasi, asantangva ajjattang loba, nattime ajjattang lobo ti pajanasi, Evam piko sivaka sandittiko dhammo hoti. Now this is even a result or this is even an example of sandittika dhamma. So you are simply doing mindfulness practice, you are operating with your mind, watching your mind, immediately there is a desire, you saw that, now it has even gone, you, and you even saw that. So you are immediately, you are attending to that. It is not that you are doing the practice here and going to get a result in the future, rather immediately as a result of your practice, that particular thought, that desire is abandoned and you can see how peaceful it is, the result is also known to you immediately. So Sandittiko Dhammo is such an electric thing, so basically when we are start to operate in our mind, so all different kinds of desires probably we can be recognized. And it probably they may not every time initiate a thought, but it can happen as a little image, maybe a mental image. Say for example, you had a very good uh, chocolate, now it is finished. You had it maybe yesterday. So today while you are sort of on your chair, once you feel a little bored, so that chocolate, that little piece, so that little wrapper, that chocolate, how beautiful it is, how tasty it is, a certain thought can of course happen or else a certain image can happen in your mind. Because we are somewhat attached to it, we are bound to it and now thoughts related to that can happen or images Sanya, perceptions related to that can happen. So there we can recognize, oh, there's a sensual desire. Maybe it is promoting certain amount of Bhavatanha also. So likewise, when we are sort of uh, expecting some, some kind of satisfaction, so those previous satisfactory experiences can give us kind of an in indication in our mind. They can pop up in our mind. They may tempt us to go for that again. But at this moment, rather than being fooled by that, driven by that, if we are able to recognize and abandon that, so then we are sort of fighting against this craving. So basically, these good things are not the issue. So that's why Buddha very beautifully mentioned Nate Kama Yani Chitran Loki Sankapurago Purisasakam Titanti Chitrani Tateva Loki Atit Dhira Vinayanti Chanda. So Buddha mentioned in the Nibedika Sutta. So there are various beautiful things available in this world. They are not the real culprit. They are not the real issue. Sankapurago Purisasakam. So you have kind of a mentally made constructed, imagined, thought about kind of desires available in one's mind. So you are imagining about it. I am going to have this kind of an experience. I am going to meet her. I am going to touch her. I am going to kiss her. I am going to hug her. So whatever it is. So I am going to buy that car. Then I am riding that. I am going to buy that frock. I am going to wear that. So likewise, even before you are really buying it, even before you are really going to have that experience, you are even imagining about it, thinking about it. You are pre-living about it. Now this is the real area that we promote our desires. 
and that actually guides us that actually further drives us pulls us towards that particular satisfaction you are very much like being slaved so we are now being driven to that desire okay i am trying to fulfill that because now i am burning with that the kind of inner burning now happens because i am imagining that again and again thinking about it again and again now i can't live without satisfying that desire so those imaginations those thoughts have made me kind of a really crazy person where internally i am now completely unsatisfied without fulfilling that desire i can't live so this is the concluding thought ultimately one may have i can't live without you i can't live without buying that car i can't live without buying that toy i can't live without buying that sari i can't live without buying that maybe a cricket bat whatever it is so that desire has grown to such an extent it has completely overwhelmed the mind now if we are able to stop that at a early stage recognize it at an early stage and abandon it then there is no burning at all so so with respect to buddha there and therefore in the with respect to the what we call a particular proper yogi a practitioner buddha mentioned api dibbe su kame su ratin so nadi gachati tanhakkhe rato hoti samma sambuddha saavaku so buddha therefore mentioned so even there are beautiful heavenly pleasures but this practitioner is not desiring that he does not delight even in the heavenly pleasures what the real disciple buddha re- disciple of the buddha is aiming at he is aiming at deduct destruction of craving abandonment of craving so you can see the difference so the typical worldly approach is simply trying to satisfy desires and as a result of that maybe this that is this sensual this sense sense cords are not enough these gratifications are not enough let me find something more but is available in another country another foreign country maybe in uh at another planet or maybe in the next life or maybe in the heavenly realm but the disciple of the buddha instead of going for that he is sort of uh, determined to abandon craving tanhakkhe rato hoti so his uh, his his target is the abandonment of craving so this is very interesting how would the uh, sort of uh, change our attitude and then in this dvetanupasana uh, sutta so therefore buddha mention etamadinava nyatta tanhang dukkhasa sambhava visatanho anadano sato bikku paribhaji so very very interesting interesting uh, statement here so one now maintain mindfulness sato continuously as much as possible and he is continuing his life without grasping anything anadano and vitatanho without craving so basically one is maintaining one's mind mindfulness currently assume there is no desire in one's mind he know that there is no desire and without grasping anything he is now continuing that state that freed state of mind not allowing the mind to be pulled to something else if that pulling happen if that kind of a tendency happen he may have to notice that and slowly revert back abandon that and maintaining that very ordinary pleasant kind of mild kind of happiness where there is no inner inner burning so vita tanho anadano sato bikku paribhaji so one has to have continuous mindfulness sato at the same time 
now not continuing any kind of grasping mind is fairly released fairly sort of uh, uh, unassociated not not having any kind of an object and with the tanho now you are if there are any desires okay you are slowly abandoning that either if there are certain thoughts coming asking this that you simply abandoning that if there are certain signs appear in one's mind promoting certain kind of a experience okay you are abandoning that either so as much as possible the clarity of the mind is available so mind become sort of uh, unmuddied so without any mud without any kind of scars stains so the clarity of the mind is fairly intact so one's responsibility in that sense is to retain that clear mind cleansed mind or we can say kind of purified mind so that tanha may not pollute one's mind okay i think with that we can conclude uh, this episode where buddha mentioned uh, uh, craving is the issue craving is the one causing the suffering and if one is able to abandon that craving then one is able to free from suffering so this is the concluding kind of uh, statement the contemplations available in the Dvetanupasana Sutta with respect to craving and with that I like to conclude today's Dhamma Sermon Sutta teaching and now I like to go for the questions. Thank you Bhakti. There is one hand raised. Gishan, you can unmute and talk now. Uh, yeah. I really like the talk today. Uh, the discussion was um, uh, very much so uh, valuable for me. I guess uh, I thought uh, there are few with that talk. Uh, there were few uh, points that I thought uh, I should uh, mention, and I think uh, towards the talk, I guess uh, I kind of realized. You know, I think. Uh, this is a general statement before my question comes uh, I think the entire world is and in our, as a child we sort of bo- uh, brought into a world and then we be taught in the exactly the opposite uh, mm-hmm. of what we need to be taught I guess correct uh, so uh, mostly you know the the consciousness uh, when you talk about the point five uh, talking about the consciousness i think uh, my understanding at this point in time uh, with this talk uh, it is all what we have learned from since our birth and it is about how our parents have taught us and as a society have been sort of a uh, uh, groom is not the most appropriate word but i have to use it i think they are groomed for us to sort of get to a certain status mm-hmm. in the society Correct. certain you know go through the qualification try to build i think this mindset now uh, i'm thinking it is the most incorrect and the corrosive mindset that we have been taught mm. in order to sort of prolong in the journey of samsara exactly uh, i think uh, what today's talk uh, merely sort of talk about you know like uh, to let go to move away so i think uh, that is the best way that i can sort of see uh, and uh, so i think uh, i'm now in, in a, a deeper puzzle have i done that to my kids as well you know like uh, so so i think uh, the, now it's a massive dilemma for me uh, so i had to talk in a, a way uh, how to overcome through that with all that uh, i wanted to ask a question uh, uh, that question i think uh, came on when we discussed uh, when you discussed about point 5 it's about the consciousness i wanted to make sure that uh, my understanding is correct uh, is am i supposed to understand is this the 
consciousness, uh, the learning of what we have gone through with this uh, lifetime or has the consciousness has some type of residues from our previous birth as well that has contributed to us who we are or who I am now to be. Definitely. I mean, there may be a <clears throat> certain impact coming from the karma, our previous karma, our previous uh, kind of activities. So basically, this consciousness is not anyway the same consciousness or it is, the, it is not a continuous consciousness we are talking. It's a momentary consciousness. When this conditioned consciousness is concerned, it's a momentary consciousness. And this momentary consciousness, by the way, gathering some kind of a momentum. So it's it's rapidity. Okay. Yeah. So its rapidity is there, but the qualities inherent available uh, inherently available in this consciousness is coming from getting certain influence from its previous ones, previous consciousness moments as well. So as a, as a result of that, we can't say that the, what we are having today this this consciousness is utterly a pure consciousness but rather it is being polluted, influenced by the previous consciousnesses. So those may be, those may be the consciousness that we have experienced within this life or maybe in our previous lives as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a kind of a, um, kind of a complex process in a way. So how all this is stuffed, stuffed into this consciousness, how all these tendencies, how all these influences, latent tendencies are stuffed in it, stored in it. It's very difficult to explain in a way. Uh, but, so that is it, because basically, uh, so our consciousness is basically conditioned, colored, so how, how we are acting, how we are working, uh, all are fairly, very much like pre-programmed in that sense. But it doesn't mean that everything is karma driven you have certain amount of your will, but a certain amount of karmic influence is there. Yes, uh, thank you, Pante. And uh, so I also thought, you know, like uh, when you were describing on some of these uh, cravings and the craving probably for uh, me to uh, consume a chocolate, mm -hmm. a piece of chocolate, mm -hmm. and then the next day to sort of see the wrapper and uh, sort of dwell on the, wow, I did enjoy, and am I supposed to find something else, so, and go into uh, the proliferation as well, mm -hmm. uh, to seek for something more, Correct. Uh, because of the past experience. Now, would that be the same? When you really think about uh, a hunger, you know, like mm. I'm hungry, I need to sort of uh, consume, or should I be sort of, uh, I think I will be a fool if I sort of go in and think about, oh, this is uh, a raga desire that I have mm. got, and that's the reason. Mm. Uh, so how should you sort of uh, evaluate those uh, type of mindsets? Yeah, correct. So that's why I, I basically touched that. Uh, now, currently assume that you already had your breakfast and you are basically filled and there is no any yeah. hunger, there is no real hunger in the body. But uh, once you see a previous day that you have had a chocolate also and now after having your breakfast you get a little thought about it, you get a little image about it. Yes. Yeah, kind of a temptation is there, kind of a, you know, uh, kind of seducing is there, seduction is there. Now, yeah, now, now even though you are not hungry, you, you are tempted to have a chocolate as well. Now, this is a kind of a desire. It is not really, really a bodily demand. It's not a really body is asking that because of its necessity of the uh, nutrition but rather the mind is desire driven at this moment so we are now go for that but th if we are able to recognize this and abandon that then there is no any harm happen to the body or uh, 
nutrition related thing rather if we are able to recognize and abandon that probably we can say okay I am operating on this desire karma tanha maybe even bhava tanha so I was able to understand that because I mean these are the areas actually we can work out so I mean sure. all, all these uh, practical situations are very good opportunities for us to understand the operation of the tanha because if we are in the meditative experience cross-legged and maintaining fair amount of very say intense kind of uh, mindfulness then there won't be much desires arising in the mind because you are you are thoroughly fortified yourself but on the other hand if you are little laps in your mindfulness and uh, uh, in a going through a kind of easy going manner so then desires have the opportunity to arise so likewise we have to maintain certain amount of vigilance but still allowing the mind to little giving some freedom to operate as it like then it may go for different kinds of desires there we can sort of understand what are the desires still available operating in this mind so what are the tendencies available so where are these uh, influences are still going through then we can get a, a very fair uh, assessment about our own mind yes uh, i i i think that is uh, yes i can definitely agree with that and uh, uh with that uh, i wanted to uh, ask a final question as well uh, you know like um, when you sort of go in the pinda path and then um, sort of serve your breakfast or your lunch at the end uh, there is always the sweets uh, and uh, you just uh, serve adequate uh, because i experienced that uh, when i came uh, uh, for that uh, few days of the retreat and i saw certain type of uh, sweets i'm experiencing after maybe 7 6 uh, 7 8 years later uh, because of my coming to sri lanka and being there so mm-hmm. i i serve them as well mm-hmm. and uh, i realized after sort of consuming maybe the breakfast and then there is not enough room <laughs> you know like uh, oh maybe i'm full uh, now i don't need to eat that even that uh, the desire or oh, i was just serving thinking that i can consume it but now uh, i can you know i think this uh, not to eat mm-hmm. so i have to sort of leave it out mm-hmm. uh, is that the kind of uh, you know you want to see that or do you want to sort of uh, see in advance or uh, or to sort of reject it uh, no i think now you're full so to uh, not to consume it mm-hmm. yeah, i think yes or, I, yeah mm-hmm. not to sort of even pick uh, mm-hmm. the very first time because you have served enough uh, so i think that is uh, sort of uh, maybe the ways that you have to sort of think mm-hmm. what is your limitation yeah. so i think uh, everywhere is all right because i mean whatever the occasion is good good occasion mm-hmm. say for example even when you are serving yourself that you think okay i mean i have served me enough so i mean i have taken fair amount of food now but still the desires are telling you okay grab another one grab, take another one yeah. take another piece right. so that is another one moment that we can recognize those desires are in operation and later as you mentioned say you are now having your meal and you have eaten enough and now you feel full okay now hunger has gone and you feel full but at that moment still desire is telling okay okay i mean this is this is new food or this is a very good food i didn't have it for a long time this is the only opportunity i am going to taste it okay you better go for that now even at that moment if we can check that recognize that that's another opportunity we can get in, uh, to see this uh, desires so both opportunities are very good uh, opportunities so whatever whatever the place if we are properly mindful step back and watch the operation of these desires that's a good opportunity very good thank you very much mante thanks yeah. for this uh, beautiful talk today Yeah, yeah. Turn on sunlight. Yeah, turn on sunlight.
Okay, that is uh, since there is no more question. Uh, Priyanka, have you received any more questions? I didn't receive okay. any question in chat. Okay, fine. Good. Then we'll wind up the session. So the we have spent uh, almost one hour and then uh, made a little discussion as well. So all these uh, merits what we have accumulated, we shall with all the celestial beings and uh, all our past relatives and whoever in need of merits. And we wish these merits help us also to attain path fruition Nibbana. We'll recite the traditional verses. Ittavata cham he he sambatan punya sampadang Sabbe deva anumodantu sabba sampati siddhya Ittavata cham he he sambatan punya sampadang Sabbe bhuta anumodantu sabba sampati siddhya Ittavata cham he he sambatan punya sampadang Sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sampati siddhya Aka satta chabumata deva naga mahidika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakantu sasanang Aka satta chabumata deva naga mahidika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakantu desanang Aka satta chabumata deva naga mahidika Punyantang anumoditva chirang rakantu mamparang Idango nyati nang ho tu sukita hum tu nyata yo Idango nyati nang ho tu sukita hum tu nyata yo Idango nyati nang ho tu sukita hum tu nyata yo Imina punya kame na mami bala samagamo Satang samagamo ho tu yavan imbana patia Imina punya kame na mami bala samagamo Satang samagamo ho tu yava nibbana patia Imina punya kame na mami bala samagamo Satang samagamo ho tu yava nibbana patia Sadu, sadu, sadu